Welcome to T4G Sports. How y'all doing today? We're going to talk Deion Sanders. In fact, I got a question for you guys. Do you think Deion Sanders is a good coach? Let us know in the comments below. And what kind of coach do you think he is? Like what kind of, what style of coach do you think he is? And while you're down there, you might as well hit the like button and subscribe and click the notification bell. You're already down there. So today we're going to talk about this topic and I'm going to give you guys my opinion. I think uh, Deion Sanders would have been a great coach, would have looked way better than he's looking right now if he would have got the job at Texas A&M or a school with a big NIL money. I think he would have been very tough to stop because he would have brought a lot of eyeballs to screens. For one, he would have brought a lot of attention. Um, they would have already had the recruiting power and they would have had the NIL. And I think it would have been a huge thing for him. I still think he can go that, that route. I still think that's a possibility. However, you went to CU, which I understand. And I don't think Deion Sanders is an X's and O's coach. I don't. I don't think he's going to be a Nick Saban, known as a Nick Saban, to have a wild defense that's drawn up perfectly. And the X's and O's are just uh, his blitz packages are unheard of. Or he's a Ryan Day, and his, his mindset for offense is just crazy, and all he thinks is X's and O's. I think Deion Sanders is more of a leader, right? And that's what he, he that's who he is. He likes to lead, all right? But I don't think he's, he's an X's and O's style coach. I think he hires for that, right? So I know CU fans will say we were 1-11 last year, and now we've won four games. It's a huge improvement. But if I'm Deion Sanders, I, I know in my head I would say, well, that 1-11 team no longer plays anymore because I replaced majority of them, so this is what my team is worth. Okay, CU fans, they're seeing an increase. Deion Sanders is like, ah, this is what my team's worth. This is what I'm representing right now because the other team's gone. Okay, now they're 70th in recruiting. You cannot win a lot of games, in my opinion, with this recruiting class if this is your average. And today, unfortunately, they had an interior lineman decommit. He's probably going to Missouri. You do not want, he's an 87 ranking, which is uh, Talon Chandler. However, even though he's not ranked super high, he's ranked high enough and he's a solid enough player that you do not want to see an interior lineman or a D lineman decommit because that is very, very, very painful. Okay, particularly when your interior line on both sides of the ball are just terrible. Uh, they're, just, they're just not good. Okay, so you don't want to see this. And I think that it's going to be very, very, very difficult um, for him to recruit at a high level. I know I keep hearing from everyone that he's a fantastic recruiter. I don't know if I would go that far because I don't actually think there's even any evidence to truly support that he's like this elite recruiter. I don't see it, at least. I know there's some of these guys are good. Aaron Butler, uh, Brandon Davis Swain. Um, Omar White, there's some. They got some good guys here, uh, but you need to still get the the hog mollies. That is Dion's biggest problem. Is he has to get the trench hogs, and if you don't get those guys, I don't care what you get on the outside. You can get all the skilled positions you want. You are going to be in trouble when you face a team that has big trench hogs, and and so if he ends up landing some of these guys like Jordan Seaton, which good luck with that. It's going to be very difficult if he does it. Congrats. Um, you know, Mikel, uh, Joseph King uh, Edwards, or King Joseph Edwards. You, you land some of these guys, you're, you're going to change the course of your recruiting class. But right now, moving forward to this next year, how what I'm looking at is you're going to have to hit it really hard in the transfer portal, which is great if you can do that, but it's still not going to be an easy task. It is not going to be easy because the excitement for CU has started to drop down a bit. Okay, it's really started to drop down a bit um, because they're, they've been getting beat. And I mean beat silly. And so if Shador leaves, some of those guys leave, and then you're looking at have he, where he has to depend solely on his recruiting class that he's bringing in. He doesn't have the NIL money, and maybe you lose some of these coaches. You don't hire the best X's and O's coaches. It's hard to be a leader of a team and coaches that maybe aren't the top of the top. Okay, and that's all I'm saying. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. So I'm hoping the best for him, and I hope he has a, you know, he lands some of these dudes, and then I hope he hits it big in the transfer portal and crushes it. And I think if he does that, he is going to be successful. If he doesn't do that, the writing's on the wall, and it's going to be particularly tough. So that's all I'm saying with that. Let us know what you guys think down below.